Hey guys, today we're talking about the Rosette Nebula 2.0. Last time we talked about the Rosette Nebula True Color in HOO. This time we're talking about the Rosette Nebula in SHO. So we're adding the sulfur component to it to produce an SHO Hubble palette of the Rosette Nebula. My name's John Robinson, the Astrotard. This is Deep Sky. Hey guys, here you can see my setup here in the backyard. So today we're talking about preparing for the Rosette Nebula. So you've probably seen my HOO True Color Rosette. Tonight I'm going to finish shooting the sulfur and hopefully we'll have everything ready and we'll have a 60 hour integration for the Hubble Palette SHO version of the Rosette Nebula. Welcome to my Astro PC here. I thought I'd give you a different perspective from my messy uh, Astro Lab. We've already got 40 hours on this target. You've, maybe you've seen in my other video on the HOO version True Color. This is the false color uh, Hubble palette version of it. Now, I say false color because, um, you know, if you were able to see this with the naked eye, if your eye were sensitive enough to see the rosette, you wouldn't see this color that we're going to produce. The Hubble palette is a, is a palette that's used by NASA to show images from the Hubble telescope. And why do they choose this particular uh, palette, if you will? The unique thing about it is uh, if you mix sulfur as red, hydrogen as green, and oxygen as blue, SHO equals RGB, this will have a show something different from true color. True color is, has a tendency to be mostly red, uh, whereas SHO has a tendency to be sort of um, bluish and tan. And the the different color mixtures allow you to see different combinations of gases and how they appear in the image. Whereas if you just looked at it in true color where everything is red, it's difficult to distinguish all the different gases. It's easier to do that in the Hubble palette and it brings out a new level of understanding of the picture. So is it a, is it a false image? I wouldn't say so. I would say it's a, it's a representation of the gases that are out there. Just like when you look at, uh, you know, a CAT scan of your body or an MRI, it's not a true color that you're looking at, but you are actually looking at different uh, color combinations representing different things of the inside of your body, giving you some great information about the inside of your body. So the SHO Hubble palette, in, in a similar way, is giving you some unique information about the target that you otherwise wouldn't see because everything's red in, in space. So that's why, I, and besides, it looks really cool. The combination of the SHO, the way it turns out, it looks sort of a, a deep blue sometimes with look, like a beachy sand color. Love that combination. It looks, it looks spectacular. So I'm excited to mix this up for you for the Rosette Nebula. This is a 60-hour exposure. Wow, this is probably, the, this is definitely the record, the longest one I've ever done. Why do I need so many exposures? Well, what I found is typically... I, I need about 40 or 50 subs for each, um, for, for each filter for it to really filter out the noise. If I can get 40 to 50 subs on a target, uh, and this graph shows you why 40 to 50 is about the right number of subs that you should get on a target. If I get that many subs, then it has a, has a tendency to really clean up the noise really well, and it looks really stunning and crystal clear and... Uh, you know, buttery, I would say. It produces a buttery image. Uh, there's some folks out there uh, online who do a much better job at this than I do. Uh, Chuck Ayobi, who you guys maybe have seen, does a really good job of, you know, producing some Hubble palette versions. Uh, and I think everyone probably would agree that 40 to 50 subs is, is probably good. I'm, I'm running at F7. Now, if I were running at F2, if I had a Raza, for example, I probably would, could get away with fewer exposures because of the sharpness of the individual subs that are coming through. Anyway, so when I'm all done, I should have 60 hours of this four-panel mosaic. This is the SHO. Let's go over now to Pix Insight. We'll mix this up. Okay, so we're polar-aligned, we're star-aligned, and we're drift-aligned, and we've done our plate-solving. 
and we're now centered on quadrant three of the Rosette Nebula. Tonight we're working on the Rosette. Uh, we finished quadrant one, we finished quadrant two, we're working on quadrant three, uh, sulfur data, and quadrant four, sulfur data. So we should be able to finish this up tonight. Uh, and this is, uh, this is that fourth quadrant right here, or the third quadrant rather. So let's look at it. Right when I say third quadrant, I'm talking about this area of the sky. And this is what the plate solve found for that area of the sky. And so that's kind of where we're focused on tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start the routine here. So uh, since I've already been aligned and uh, polar lined and plate solved and all that stuff, and we're on a guide star, our next step is to do some focusing on the, on the sulfur. So let's go ahead and show you how I do that. So its first data capture is at motor focus position 5790. And that position is showing a, uh, a value of about four and a half. It's now moving to focus position 5765, which I believe is uh, 25 points in between focus there. Okay, so the motor position 5765 has an HFR of three and a half. So we're getting close to that right-hand side of the V now. Again, at the bottom of the V will be the perfect focal point. Um, and we expect that to be around 57.15, as we noticed before. Um, so the third one here, all right, third data point, 57.40, looks like it's right on three. This should bottom out just, just below two, around 1.8 is usually where sulfur will bottom out in terms of the HFR measurement. Half flux radius, HFR, I think that's what that stands for. Okay, the fourth point is 57.15. We're getting close to the bottom now. I think maybe the one more point we should get there and, and find the bottom here of the V, which should be our perfect focal point. Um, and I could validate that perfect focal point by putting the Batonov mask on top of the telescope and uh, just seeing if, if that result gives me a perfect spike pattern on the Batonov mask. Okay, so 56.90 is what it's predicting to be at this point as the vocal position. And now, uh, in order to complete the measurement, it's going to take at least three points on the left-hand side of the V before it, it uh, makes a decision on the focus. So there's the first point there. I guess that's the second. First one is 56.90, second one, 5665. It should take one more data point before it can evaluate where the V um, is. And yeah, there it is. Okay, so the 5640 are the last data point. So it's determined that 5704 is the perfect focal position tonight at this particular temperature. And focus is really determined, focal point is determined by temperature outside because it'll affect your optics, how cold or warm it is outside. So let's go ahead and get started and, and capture some data now. Let's make sure that our folder is uh, looking for rosette here. So I want to be in the rosette folder. It looks like I am. And it looks like I'm only capturing sulfur here. I've unchecked everything else. And right now we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go ahead and run the sequence. Yes, let's run the sequence. And uh, guider checking the guider stat status right now. So it's checking PhD2. And the I can see here the auto guider has uh, found itself another star. I'm going to ignore that error for now. So it's locked it on to that star. Let's go ahead and clear that so we have a good log to go with. And now it's going to do another autofocus. I don't want this to do that so because I know 5704 is a good position to start from. Let's make sure we go to 5704. There's 5704. Okay. And now we should be good to go. Now we're integrating or, and we're capturing a four-minute sub on the Rosette Nebula. This will be sub number 16 when it's completed. I'll go ahead and let that run. And uh, we'll, we'll show you guys some, some data after I've got all the data captured. It's finished. I finally captured all the sulfur. So here I'm showing you the PixInsight Astro PC desktop here. And let's just kind of go through what I've got. So you know that I've already captured all of the, of the hydrogen and the oxygen. Nevertheless, I decided to go ahead and, and just do everything from scratch. So I went into script, batch preprocessing, weighted batch preprocessing, and I added all my bias, darks and flats, and then all the lights. And for the lights, I, uh, this is what I came up with. Here it is, 684 
subs. Now, I thought this, this was going to be a 60-hour mosaic, and it would have been 60 hours plus uh, if this were captured under 300-second subs. But I, I neglected to notice that they're not 5-minute subs, they're actually 4-minute subs, so 240-second subs. So 684 times 240 seconds is roughly 45 hours exposure for this SHO. Uh, still, it's a record for me. And anyway, so here's what we've got. So you've already seen the hydrogen and the oxygen before. You've seen those before. And I decided to, as I said, capture them all again at the same time. But here's what the sulfur data look like. Here's quadrant one, there's two, three, and four. Now before I mixed these four quadrants, I, I did a quick automatic background extraction on them. I also did a multi-scale linear transform as well as an AC DNR. I did those three steps to the subs before I went ahead and star lined them. Once I had done those steps, then I did a star line to my reference. And I just added the views for S1, 2, and 3. And that created the registered version of these. Again, this is putting it in the, in the right quadrant, right? And my reference was uh, based on the last time I ran this. All right, so those are the subs for sulfur. Then I uh, put them in their locations. I did a gradient merge mosaic. And I learned something about gradient merge mosaic. I learned that if you if you use the default settings, you're more likely to get that cross pattern in there. So what I did, to, I adjusted the default settings. I changed the strength radius to seven and the feather radius to 15. And that seemed to do a better job of mixing, at least for sulfur. In this picture, I, I, I don't see the residue of those crosses that I've seen in the past. Um, here's what it, what oxygen turned out looking like, and uh, here's what the hydrogen turned out looking like. So I'm pretty happy with uh, the way those merge mosaics turned out. Once I had the SHO, then I went into pixel math and, and just uh, ran this script here, S for red, H for green, O for blue, and I executed that, and this is what I came up with here. This is the this is the pure, uh, un, unadulterated, undoctored mix of SHO. Then of course I did an SCNR to get rid of the green and then uh, this is the version that I came up with. This was my starting point for the SHO. It's starting to look like the Hubble palette. From this point <clears throat> I removed the nebula from the stars and then this nebula here was my starting point for the stretch. Here's the nebula that I started with. Here's the nebula that I ended up with after all the tweaking. So you can see it's a bit brighter and I've obviously pushed the colors up a little bit emphasizing the the azure blue and sort of the beachy colored uh, you know uh, dust clouds around the outside. I like this mixture of the SHO. And so once I had that then I went ahead and added the stars back in and I, I like to do that using the 1.25 method because again the astrodon filters that I use stars have a tendency to be dimmer so when I did that then I came up with this and I'm calling this the the final image this is my final SHO and I thought maybe it's a little bit too green so I took some of the green out so here's maybe a more of a uh, less green or more blue colored SHO uh, but the one I really like, I guess, is this one. I do like a little hint of green in there. If you compare that to the HOO side by side, this is what they looked like. What do you guys think? Pretty happy with it. Uh, the one thing I observe about it is using the weighted batch preprocessing, it really does a great job of getting rid of all those asteroids. I didn't really see a lot of asteroids uh, in, that I had to clean up. If I did the regular batch pre-processing, those asteroids would be there. So adding that weighting to it certainly, for whatever reason, has a tendency to get rid of those asteroids. Also, I think it looks pretty buttery. Buttery, what I mean by that is it looks really smooth in here. There's not a lot of noise. You know, there's... Um, so again, this 
HOO is about 480 subs. This SHO is about 680 subs. And it's just, there's more data in here. And, you know, it's it just looks buttery. So I like it. Uh, I think it's pretty good. So this is my record. This is my <laughs> the most subs I've ever done. 45 hours exposure. So this is it. And uh, let me know if you have any questions or any comments uh, about the technique that I used or any feedback here. I'd appreciate it. Definitely my favorite work so far, the SHO Rosette Nebula. I'll probably turn this into an oil print when I'm done. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.